Hello, and thank you so much for watching this pre-recorded section of Scaffolding Your Instruction with Epistemology, a presentation for the 2020 Critical Librarianship and Pedagogy Symposium. If you'd like to follow along with these slides, you can view them at tinyurl.com slash C-L-P-S-D-E-A-N. My name is Kirsten Dean, and I'm a High Impact Practices Librarian at Virginia Tech, serving as part of our library's teaching and learning engagement team. So this means that I am the liaison to several offices and programs around campus that engage students in activities considered to be high impact, like first year experiences, learning communities, and global education. In this video, I'm going to explore these two main questions, and then we'll engage in a live reflection and discussion on September 16th. All of our lives have, at the very least, been shaken up over the last few months. And I've been asking this question of myself, my friends, my colleagues, what keeps you feeling grounded right now when it seems like the bottom has fallen out of everything? I've also been asking this of my teaching practices. Where are they grounded? And even more specifically, where can I find solid ground to build upon as I try to teach myself and my students to navigate polluted digital information environments in the midst of a pandemic, a rise of fascism, soaring wealth inequality, a new civil rights movement, and the increasingly widespread visibility of state violence, anti-blackness, and systemic racism. These are hardly new questions, but they're huge questions, and luckily scholars far wiser than I have been tackling them for some time, so I turn to their words first. Over a decade ago, sociologist Dr. Jesse Daniels wrote in her exploration of racism online that, quote, the internet offers a new terrain for those who seek and produce stigmatized knowledge, blurring the lines between history and propaganda. More recently, to very well-deserved acclaim, information scientist Dr. Safia Umoja Noble reminded us that when we use popular tools to search for information online, quote, search does not merely present pages, but structures knowledge. In practice, the higher a web page is ranked, the more it's trusted. This past January, information scientists with Project Information Literacy released a report arguing that their findings over the last 10 years of research, quote, raise questions about whether the gap between what students learn in school and what they need to know is deepening at a time of an epistemological crisis. We know there's a problem with how we're teaching and learning about digital information, and we know that it's bolstering the dangerous and devastating effects of disinformation. The more I have listened to these voices, and also to these voices, the more I have grown fixated on the concept of knowledge and questions about how we know what we think we know. It seems like every thinker that I most admire has been repeating the importance of epistemological questions. And I have to give a particular shout out to two of my former teachers in the School of Library and Information Studies at the University of Alabama, Dr. John Burgess, whose book project with Dr. Emily Knox is featured on this slide, really inspired me to start exploring the ethics of knowledge. And his work particularly addresses the role of virtue ethics and epistemology in critical library work. Also, Dr. Miriam Sweeney, through her classes on the social aspects of information, pointed me toward key thinkers like Dr. Collins and Dr. Benjamin. I'm deeply grateful to continue learning from all of this work, and particularly from Black feminist scholars. And so in trying to figure out the conceptual core that would help me learn to teach about pressing issues like digital propaganda, these scholars kept pushing me towards this question. What would my library instruction look like if I always grounded it, started it, by asking, in some formulation, how do we know what we know? There are a few terms that I've found helpful as I start this journey of teaching information literacy through questions about knowledge. And since the words we use to talk about things are so important, I want to offer a couple definitions and some relevant terms for further exploration. So when I use the word epistemology, I'm referring to the broad concept of studying the nature of knowledge and knowing. Since there are so many different viewpoints on this topic, we each have a personal epistemology. 
which I'm defining as our own understandings of what constitutes knowledge. And since we're all here in the pursuit of critical librarianship and pedagogy, I think the relationship between epistemology and ethics is particularly important, which is why I've quoted from an entry in the Rutledge Encyclopedia of Philosophy, quote, epistemology and ethics are both concerned with evaluations, ethics with evaluations of conduct, epistemology with evaluations of beliefs and other cognitive acts. And I would add that I think librarians should be just as concerned as philosophers with the relationship between evaluating ethics and evaluating what we consider to be knowledge. I do want to emphasize an important distinction here. I'm not advocating that librarians start teaching classes on the theory of knowledge or epistemology. That's the purview of philosophy departments and their experts. What I am advocating for is that we as library and education professionals intentionally interrogate our own beliefs about knowledge, how those beliefs affect the ways we approach information, and that we challenge our students to do the same. Again, I'm certainly not the first to highlight the crucial role of epistemological questions in our work as critical library instructors. Mike Caulfield, um, probably best known for his SIFT evaluation method, tweeted a few weeks ago about the importance of one particular epistemological stance, specifically that analyzing the evolving science around COVID-19 requires an understanding of social epistemology rather than using individual self-verification as a measure of scientific truth. In other words, he argues that we need to trust experts. This led me to ask myself, where might I be unintentionally pushing students toward individualistic conceptions of knowledge in the ways that I teach about information? I think these kinds of questions really matter and that they are particularly crucial as we try to highlight the value of marginalized knowledge, correct epistemic injustices, and resist the power structures inherent in our information and education systems. Personally, and you all are maybe light years ahead of me on this, but I'm not sure that I would be able to grapple with these questions if I didn't continually return to self-reflection about my personal epistemology. When we're mired in sophisticated global disinformation campaigns, information and digital literacy is not just about evaluating sources of information. It's about evaluating our own beliefs and constructions of what even counts as knowledge and who is included or excluded in our definitions. With all that in mind, I want to move on to the practical side of what these ideas have meant for me so far. What does a focus on questions about knowledge actually look like in library classrooms and information literacy programs? We're all dealing with different challenges, but as I and many of my colleagues try to figure out the best way to teach about disinformation, viral propaganda, racism, and algorithmic bias, many of us are faced with very brief opportunities for instruction, which must be negotiated with course instructors. I also face constant crises about the limits of my expertise on these crucial issues, along with the pressure to teach less about concepts and systemic critiques, and more about concrete skills that students need to complete class assignments. And no, I do not think that the conceptual and concrete are irreconcilable. But I continue to feel empathy for perspectives such as this one, from an anonymous research participant quoted in Eamon Tool's 2018 article, The Practice and Promise of Critical Information Literacy. I think it's absolutely possible, but depending on your institution's resources uh, for things like creating digital tutorials, it can also be very challenging to balance critical inquiry with skills training. We'll talk a lot more in our live discussion about what all this means for classroom praxis, but I want to offer a few ideas to get us started with that conversation. This request might look familiar to many academic instruction librarians. An instructor asking for a traditional library session where you are expected to teach students how to identify peer-reviewed articles and locate and access them through library databases. There are an extraordinary number of ways to address this request with an engaging and critical lesson. 
But honestly, especially when stressed and overwhelmed, sometimes I forget where to start and end up falling back a little too much on lecture and point and click demonstrations. So my current approach is to start by asking what questions and assumptions about knowledge are implied in this request and therefore figuring out how to fulfill the instructor's needs while still emphasizing critical analysis. For example, there's an implication here that scholarly sources are necessary for students to explore their topics, a pretty classic assumption in academia. But rather than focusing on trying to deposit a skill by offering checklists of the characteristics of scholarly articles or teaching students to use a database filter, what does this lesson look like if we start by interrogating the creation and values, economic, ethical, practical, all sorts of values, of different knowledge systems? I find that, in fact, by backing up to questioning the origin of scholarly literature, asking who gets to create it throughout history, what kinds of expertise and evidence it values, who has access to reading and understanding it, etc. Students are simultaneously critiquing and more deeply learning the traits of a scholarly journal article, as well as why they might need to use the library to get around paywalls and find those articles. Round off this discussion with some hands-on practice searching in a database, and the instructor's request is satisfied while also, I hope, nudging students toward a habit of critiquing systems. If this is a framework within a single lesson, what does it look like to start with questions about knowledge and knowing across instruction programs? I can offer a few examples from my institutional context, and we will absolutely continue this discussion with more examples during our live session. Again, on the individual workshop level, this might look like examining the effect of affinity bias on the kinds of information we allow into our process of knowledge formation. It only takes part of a lesson to try a circle of trust style activity, where you might ask students to list the top five people they trust for information and analysis of current events. These could be friends, journalists, commentators, teachers, etc. Then ask students to put a check mark next to each person who, as far as they're aware, shares the student's political affiliation, their nationality, their race, their gender, their language, their religion, and so forth. This can prompt a brief discussion about who we allow to affect our understanding of the world, and why, which leads pretty smoothly into a contemplation of digital information environments and filter bubbles. Then there's still time to practice concrete skills, like Mike Caulfield's SIFT method, but the hope is that student understanding of those skills is now influenced by reflection on the many factors that influence their personal processes of forming knowledge about a topic all without once mentioning the word epistemology, but still introducing that concept. On a curricular level, my colleagues have been discussing how we often get essentially the same request, help students recognize scholarly literature and use library databases for so many classes, which might mean that a student has a library session in their first semester, first year experience course that is almost indistinguishable from the library session in their second semester first year writing course. We're currently working on projects to intentionally scaffold this instruction rather than flat out repeat it. And I'm once again finding a starting point in epistemology. We're developing a set of videos with ancillary activities and reflection prompts that are targeted toward first year experience, FYE classes to help students interrogate the very idea of knowledge and the many definitions of research in the context of both daily life and academic work. These ideas are then, we hope, reinforced rather than repeated when, perhaps in a first year writing class, students tackle larger research papers and learn more specifically about scholarly conceptions of knowledge through that assignment. These are developing projects, but I'm more than happy to chat about them if you have any desire for more details. At this point, one critique of many that you might be leveling against all of these ideas is that I could just as easily start with questions about information rather than questions about 
knowledge. I focus on the words knowledge and epistemology to emphasize our systems of understanding the world and constructing meaning as distinct from evaluating external pieces of information. So I'm most interested in all the facets of what's going on when we make the judgment call to accept a piece of information into our minds as knowledge. That's why for me, asking how do I know what I know actually has much broader implications than asking is this information or this information system credible or relevant. It allows me to keep in the forefront of my mind the idea of knowledge as a transformation of information into deeply internalized beliefs about the nature of reality as we each individually understand it and whose truths we accept as justified belief and whose we reject as fictions, lies, or exaggerations. Focusing on knowledge is also a touchstone for me in the midst of chaos and competing priorities that I can try to thread through multiple learning experiences, no matter how disparate they may seem, because knowledge is a relevant concept in any discipline, and really in any context. And while information tends to make me think of accumulation, The idea of knowledge can also emphasize how crucial it is to unlearn and uproot harmful beliefs and understandings. In short, this focus reminds me to never underestimate students and to start with big ideas and core concepts. I'm going to close with what I see as the first step, interrogating our own assumptions and beliefs and biases about knowledge. How do you conceptualize and define knowledge? How does that inform the ways that you teach about information? Or perhaps this epistemological grounding doesn't resonate with you. So what does? Where does your teaching start? What is the thread that runs through all of the educational experiences that you design? These questions will be a jumping off point for our discussion. Thank you so much for listening to my learning process around prioritizing questions about knowledge. And also please remember that this video is merely an introduction. I very much hope that you'll be able to join me for a facilitated reflection and discussion on Wednesday, September 16th at 1.30 Mountain Standard Time or where I am, 4.30 Eastern Daylight Time. During this session, we'll reflect on our personal beliefs about knowledge, debate the merits of this focus in the first place, um, discuss some implications for scaffolding, and share practical ideas about what this work looks like in our physical and virtual classrooms. I'm excited to learn from you, and thanks again for your time.